Hi there and uh, welcome back to uh, episode 2 of my trip. I just uh, woke up here in Clarence, had a little bit of breakfast and coffee. And I'm going to get uh, packed up and uh, get ready to go. Yeah, it seems like everything packed up very quickly, but it probably took me about an hour or so get everything uh, in place and uh, tied up to the bike, secured and uh, sure that it's not going to go anywhere for the rest of the day. Yeah, Clarence is a very beautiful town to wake up to. It's very quiet and uh, yeah, if you look around you always uh, get to see some beautiful uh, scenery, all the mountains. Yeah, so I'm just taking a little ride through town. I have to uh, also uh, refuel before I'm going to get on my way. I'm going to go today to uh, Olival North. I'm going to visit my aunt there. I haven't seen her for quite some time. That's about uh, 360 kilometers uh, to go for today. So uh, I'm going to make some videos for the first two hours, but uh, yeah, then I'm going to be on the way. Yeah, I'm actually also looking very much forward to the ride for today. It's going to be uh, mostly uh, uh, through the Maluti Mountains, uh, just next to the border of uh, Lesotho. Lesotho is going to be the whole day just uh, on the left of me. And uh, yeah, this area is uh, quite high up uh, in the middle of the country. Uh, it uh, gets pretty cold here in the winter. And uh, yeah, since it's just about uh, almost uh, autumn time, it's already a little bit uh, chilly in the mornings here. Yeah, and some things which are very uh, unique to this area, it's uh, buildings made of uh, sandstone bricks. Yeah, they uh, break off uh, sandstone bricks from these mountains and then uh, build their houses with it. Yeah, these houses just uh, seem to be so sturdy and uh, can uh, withstand any type of a storm. Yeah, also, uh, these uh, tall trees you see all around, uh, they are also not indigenous. They are called the Lombardi uh, poplar trees. They are also very unique to this area. And then, uh, of course, uh, we've seen some of the willow trees that's growing around. Also, many of these uh, pine trees and uh, eucalyptus grow very tall here. But they are not uh, indigenous from here. The Eastern Free State is very famous for the cherries. In uh, Fixburg, they have a lot of uh, cherry plantations and uh, they have a typical uh, cherry festival every uh, November when all the cherries are uh, in season. Also, uh, what you find uh, very abundant around here is uh, peaches. People like to grow peaches in their garden and uh, typically in springtime here in August you can see the peach trees from miles away all blooming with uh, beautiful pink flowers. As what typically happens is that when uh, people drive up and down this road they all uh, throw the peach uh, pips and the cherry seeds out of the window and uh, as you see along the road you can find many peach uh, trees and uh, cherry plants uh, growing next to the road. What's also very typical of this time of the year, it's normally just in the autumn before winter comes. Uh, so, so many of these uh, cosmos fields that you can see all around. And uh, cosmos is this uh, pink and white flowers that you see all along the road. And they are actually also not indigenous from South Africa. They were actually brought here by the English when they were uh, fighting in the war with the Boer South Africans, they actually imported horses from Argentina. And of course, together with the horses, they had to bring feed as well with the horses. And together with the feed of the horses, also many weed seeds were uh, uh, yeah, brought along with them. And that uh, caused many uh, uh, yeah, uh, non-indigenous uh, plants, weeds uh, growing in South Africa and it uh, became actually quite uh, typical South African now, uh, the cosmos flowers and they are even uh, protected at the moment. Uh, so the Free State Province is one of uh, nine provinces of South Africa and lies entirely above 1000 uh, meters above the sea level. It's also known as uh, South Africa's bread basket because it produces about 70% of uh, South Africa's grains. 
and uh, also about uh, 40 percent of uh, south africa's potato uh, the whole province has uh, over 30,000 farms and uh, yeah also uh, south africa is one of the top 10 maize producers in the world yeah, the winters in this province uh, can be mostly uh, dry and very cold with uh, fre frequent uh, snowfalls but in the summer it uh, usually rains quite a bit in some parts uh, even more than uh, 800 millimeters uh, per year and uh, usually rain falls as uh, thunderstorms in the late afternoon yeah, the free state province is also a very big uh, mining province it uh, produces about 20 percent of uh, the world's mining uh, gold and uh, it also uh, produces uh, many uh, f uh, many other minerals like uh, silver and uranium as byproducts. Uh, also, uh, there are lots of uh, coal produced uh, close to Sasselberg, which is then converted uh, to electricity. Uh, and South Africa still uses about uh, ninety percent uh, coal power. Yeah, most of the people in this province uh, also uh, actually from the Sesotho nation, uh, also speaking the main uh, Sesotho language. They are uh, typically from uh, Lesotho, but uh, there are actually more uh, Sotho speaker people in South Africa than in Lesotho. Lesotho is just a very small country with uh, just over 2 million population. And just like that, I jumped over to the next day. Uh, yeah, on my way to Alival North, I had a bit of a wrong turn and I had to speed to be on time to meet my auntie. I didn't make any more uh, videos. But uh, yeah, then uh, on the next day, I uh, started from Alival North and I was on my way to uh, Grafreinet, driving mostly through the Eastern Cape province and uh, through the Little Karua. It's also a very very beautiful part of the country but you can clearly see it's uh, much drier especially this time of the year here i'm driving through steinsburg which is a small farming town in the eastern cape some farmers uh, would uh, come to visit uh, this town to uh, come and do some administrative uh, duties and uh, probably also visit some of the shops or the markets to come and uh, deliver some of the products. Uh, this town uh, is actually named after Doe Stein. Uh, he used to be uh, Paul Kruger's grandfather and uh, this town was actually uh, started uh, around the Dutch Reformed Church around uh, 1872. These little farming towns in South Africa are actually so unique and it's a bit of a shame that they are a little bit forgotten and uh, not well administered and uh, maintained and uh, it's actually uh, running very quiet and uh, there's not much opportunities for uh, local people around you can typically see when you ride into a town like this if the roads are full of potholes from steinsburg i was uh, on my way to uh, middelburg uh, middelburg is a little town just between Koolsberg and graf Renet on the n9 and from Middelburg, I went over the Nodiesberg Pass, which is uh, just 40 kilometers north of uh, Grafreinet and uh, goes just over 1446 meters above the sea level. This was such a nice riding. I really enjoyed this ride. Uh, there was uh, very little wind. The road conditions was just perfect. There was almost no uh, traffic. And uh, yeah, I was just really enjoying the ride. But unfortunately, I didn't notice that uh, a bug flew into my camera and it left a big, big red spot on the camera lens. I tried to remove it uh, afterwards in the video, but that's not so uh, easy. The arrival time to Graf Reinet was not too late. I think just after one o'clock or so. And then I went to the shops and went to buy a few... Uh, uh, things for a uh, braai, um, yeah, sausage and chicken, and uh, yeah, then I made a little braai for the evening. These are just a few pictures of uh, the way, because I didn't make so much video on the way, 
also the most of the videos that I had was uh, smudged by the bug. Provkorn is a very nice resort I used to stay here at with uh, on tours and they actually let me stay here for free for the night. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it again. Yeah, the next video will be me going to uh, Outhoren to visit my friend Alex and then uh, on the way from there going to uh, Stillby for some holiday time. So uh, if you enjoyed this video please like and uh, press the notification button so you can see when I uh, post some new videos. Now please take care of yourselves out there, stay safe and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.